Good day, learners! It's so nice to have you all again for another great learning experience. I am Teacher Ja, by the way, and I will help you understand your video lesson. Our lesson for today is about emerging and re-emerging diseases. At the end of our video lesson, you must be able to think the following. First, differentiate emerging from re-emerging diseases. And second, describe the different diseases that are classified as emerging and re-emerging. So the question is, are you ready to go down into business? Alright, so let's go! So to start off, let's first have a short game. And this game will be called Picture Perfect. The mechanics of the game are simple. So all you have to do is to look at the picture, connect it with the jumbled word, and rearrange it to match the picture but remember this game is time limited so i will only give you up to five seconds to answer each picture am i clear with that all right so let's begin first picture The correct answer is bacteria. Second picture. The correct answer is illness. Third picture. The correct answer is virus. Fourth picture. The correct answer is communicable. And the last picture. The correct answer is treatment. So, did you enjoy their game? How about how many pictures were you able to answer correctly? Alright, what a job well done! So, let's now move on to our next phase. The lesson proper. So, are you all ready to learn? Alright, so let's begin! A gentle reminder, my dear learners. Some picture examples might be quite disturbing for you. Parental guidance is advised. Emerging diseases are those that have not occurred in humans before or that occurred only in small numbers in isolated places. It means developing, arising, and appearing. Re-emerging diseases are those diseases that once were major health problems globally or in a particular country and then decline dramatically but are again becoming health problems for a significant proportion of the population. Re-emergence may happen because of a breakdown in public health measures for diseases that were once under control. They can also happen 
when a new strain of disease causing organisms appear. So learners, do you know some diseases that are classified as emerging and re-emerging? Alright, so let's find out if what you're thinking are correct. Here are the list of the different emerging and re-emerging diseases. 1. Leptospirosis 2. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS 3. Chikungunya 4. Meningococcemia 5. Foot and Mouth Disease 6. Avian Influenza 7. AH1N1 Influenza Let's first discuss Leptospirosis Leptospirosis, or also known as Wiles disease, is a rare bacterial infection we get from animals. It is spread through their urine, especially from dogs, rodents, and farm animals that affects us. People can get the disease by swimming or wading in fresh, unchlorinated water, such as flood, contaminated with animal urine, or by coming into contact with wet soil or plants contaminated with animal urine. It has been considered as an emerging and now re-emerging global public health problem because of its increasing incidence in both developing and developed countries. A number of leptospirosis outbreaks have occurred over the past few years in various places such as Nicaragua, Brazil, India, and even in the Philippines. Next is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome is a viral respiratory disease caused by a SARS-associated coronavirus. SARS is an airborne virus and can spread through small droplets of saliva in a similar way to the cold and influenza. SARS can also be spread indirectly by surfaces that have been touched by someone who is infected with the virus. Examples are grab handles or pole, doorknob, handrail, and cell phone. The disease was identified at the end of February 2003 during an outbreak that emerged in China and spread to other countries like Hong Kong, Taiwan, Vietnam, Singapore, and Canada. It was the first severe and readily transmissible new disease to emerge in the 21st century and showed a clear capacity to spread along the routes of international air travel, affected the business industries around the world, and created a generation of public anxiety. Let's now have chikungunya. Chikungunya is a viral disease that is transmitted to humans by infected mosquitoes. This includes Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. These two species can also transmit other mosquito-borne viruses including dengue. They bite throughout daylight hours although there may be peaks of activity in the early morning and late afternoon. The most common symptoms of infection are first, fever, and second, joint pain. There is currently no vaccine or specific drug against the virus. The treatment is focused primarily on relieving the disease symptoms. For our next one, we have meningococcemia. 
Meningococcemia is a rare infectious disease caused by the Neisseria meningitidis bacteria. This causes upper respiratory tract infection, fever, skin rash and lesions, eye and ear problems, and possibly a sudden state of extreme physical depression which may be life-threatening without appropriate medical care. Generally, it takes close or lengthy contact to spread this bacteria. For example, coughing and kissing. Next up, foot and mouth disease. Foot and mouth disease is a severe, highly contagious viral disease of livestock that has a significant economic impact. The disease affects cattle, swine, sheep, goats, and other cloven hoofed remnants. FMD is characterized by fever and blister like sores on the tongue, lips, in the mouth, on the tits, and between the hooves. The disease causes severe production losses. And while the majority of the animals recovered, the disease often leaves them weakened and debilitated. Moving on, we have avian influenza. Avian influenza is a virus infecting wild birds and waterfowl as well as domestic poultry, such as chickens, turkeys, quail, and geese. When infected birds do show signs, here's what to look for. First, lack of energy and appetite. Second, decreased egg production and or soft-shelled or misshapen eggs. Third, swelling of the head, eyelids, comb, wattles, and hocks. Fourth, purple discoloration of the wattles, combs, and legs. Fifth, runny nose, coughing, and sneezing. Sixth, stumbling or falling down. Seven, diarrhea. And eighth, sudden death without any clinical signs. And lastly, AH1N1 influenza. H1N1 flu is also known as swine flu. It is called swine flu because in the past, people who caught it had direct contact with pigs. It is a subtype of influenza A virus which causes upper and potentially lower respiratory tract infections in the host it infects. People who have it can spread it one day before they have any symptoms and as many as seven days after they get sick. On the other hand, kids can be contagious for as long as 10 days. The symptoms of AH1N1 influenza are the following. Cough, fever, sore throat, stuffy or runny nose, body aches, headache, chills, and fatigue. And that is all for the different emerging and re-emerging diseases. I hope you have learned a lot from this video lesson. Again, this is Teacher Jack, happy to serve.